this week on Dine Drink Clear the Podcast. Rude Food, as you know, is known for some pretty decadent and elegant pies. They have taken at least one off the menu and introduced two new ones. Mm-hmm. They're also going to be doing desserts. So are they planning on doing less of the pies, does it sound like? Yes, that's what it sounds like when I was talking to them. Yeah. Another one on that sweet side of things, too, is their deep fried cheesecake, which is if you just look that's at ridiculous. this thing, it's, when I tell We've you, gone too far. <laughs> it is. You're right, it probably is too far, but it is so good. Also, like Chris and Joe, when they started, they just thought it would be a cool thing. Like, they never owned a mm-hmm. restaurant concept like that, and they were able to make it so successful. So now, getting this new space, like, they're really excited to be able to do more with it because they've already built such a huge following in just their little mm-hmm. neighborhood spot. So. I'm Josh Duke. And I'm Alex Darris. And you're either watching or listening to Dying Drink Clea the Podcast, where each and every week we're joined by Cleveland's best and brightest food experts, insiders, and influencers talking all things food and drink here in the Northeast Ohio area. What are we talking about today, Alex? Believe it or not, it's kind of the beginning of spooky season. We're getting Halloween decorations. There's pumpkins out. So we're going to talk about Halloween weekends at Cedar Point and the mm-hmm. food offerings there. We're going to also talk about rude food and pie in Lakewood, some changes going on over there. We have Bruellas in Lakewood expanding, and we also have a story about a brewery closing. So lots of different things to talk about today. Yep. Yeah, first up, we got Paris Wolf. Welcome, Paris. Hi, Josh. Hi, Alex. Hi. So Rude Food, they recently hired a new pastry chef. What can you tell us about that? Well, they were recently sold. They were purchased by Vessel Hospitality, and the former pastry chef and some of the team are no longer there. And Annabella Andrix, formerly of Solstice, is taking over the pastry program at rude food yeah and annabella runs dramatic snacks i know too and they have her baked goods are at like Juneberry table i think a couple other places a couple other places yeah yeah and she's going to take over originally they weren't going to make a lot of changes but it sounds like they are making some changes rude food as you know is known for its pie Um, some pretty decadent and elegant pies. They have taken at least one off the menu and introduced two new ones. Mm -hmm. They're also going to be doing desserts that are plated desserts. And what that means is you might have cake on a plate with a small scoop of ice cream, with a sauce, with a a dab of cream. And it's just kind of a built plate that has an artistic touch to it. So are they planning on doing less of the pies, does it sound like? Yes, that's what it sounds like when I was talking to them. Yeah, that's kind of crazy considering they are so known in the neighborhood, especially for the pie Mm -hmm. specifically. That's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering how it's going to go. Yeah, Yeah. like are they going to emphasize a different pastry or or are they going to work on a different sort of specialty, I wonder. Yeah, well, Well, it sounds like just a little bit of everything. Thing. Yeah, nice. Annabella said they're going to continue to roll it out slowly and make change because people are resi- can be resistant to change. Mm-hmm. Um, but they also might be taking off pies and adding in new pies or other desserts. I don't think they're going to expand the menu a lot based on our conversation, but it is going to be different. Yeah, that's, yeah, it is crazy just because they have had certain pies, like they have a like a tahini. Custard. They still have that one right now. In fact, Annabelle did talk about going vegan with more of the desserts. Oh, mm-hmm. that's a Lakewood thing. Yeah, it feels <laughs> like we're seeing that trend go uh, with a lot of different restaurants. Yeah, 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 it's like mocktails, vegan. Yeah. They're becoming trendy. Yeah, for sure. But it is, uh, it sounds crazy. And especially because, um, so Annabelle just recently was Solstice. She was an owner. They closed. So it's nice that if people were missing the desserts there they can go try them at rude now right yeah so they're not off the market and she eventually is going to be doing some um selling of pies and cakes to people outside the restaurant sales okay yeah but i guess it's if you have your favorite pie at rude you might want to go try it before there's something else to try so yeah but Okay, so Alex, you have some news about Bruellas. Looks like they're celebrating an anniversary and moving into a newer, bigger space. Yes, so Bruellas in Lakewood is a really adorable uh, 
crepery coffee shop everything mm -hmm. if you've ever been there it's so like aesthetic <laughs> i love the word crepery I'm i know <laughs> <laughs> well they they make crepes but um <laughs> so they just celebrated six years in lakewood in august and if you've also been there you know it can be a little tight mm -hmm. uh, they have that it's seating can be hard to fight over they have two crepe burners so if there's a wait on the weekends like it takes a minute but now they just announced that they're going to be moving literally a block or two down the street into the former lakewood music collective space so it's basically going to be doubling their space they're going to have a huge new back kitchen that they can expand their bakery so part of what they want to do because the crepes are made to order and sometimes there's a wait with that but mm -hmm. they're going to offer empanadas as more of a ready-made option okay. Uh, yes, because one of the owners, his mother, I think is from Argentina. So she'll mm. make some Argentinian desserts too, but she makes the empanadas. Um, and they also want to add other baked goods and kind of like we were just talking about with the vegan, they want to have be able to make gluten-free crepes, like mm -hmm. used gluten-free batter. They didn't feel like it was right to do it in the little space, like too easy to grab something, the wrong mm -hmm. thing, you know, but now they have a dedicated space to do it. And what's also really cool is they're gonna have this extra room for overflow seating, but they're gonna make it an event space too. So they're gonna host like craft classes, okay. like, uh, baby showers, wedding showers. And so the whole thing with Bruella's is it's um, owned by a, a couple, Chris and Joe, uh, Chris Murphy and Joe Kepler, and they kind of created this character. Her name is Bruella. She's okay. an old woman who collects antiques. She's got a pet dog, a fish, a cat, and a bird. But it's like okay. everything they do there is from this perspective. Oh, that's cute. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of made an amalgamation of like all the women that like inspired them in their lives or that they look up to. And they kind of, so they do everything through this lens. So it's very much like grandma doing crafts and like making fresh um, mm -hmm. empanadas and stuff like that. So like, I feel like the events, like the way that they do, especially their decor, it's like you could have the cutest baby shower there or even the crafting classes. It's not something like a huge undertaking or commitment. Mm -hmm. They want it to be, I think Chris said creative for the sake of being creative. So like, mm -hmm. Go there to learn how to knit a beanie or so, a button. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very, I think Bruella's is one of the strongest, like, themes mm -hmm. of it, especially a coffee shop. Like, they have such a good vision and they're really trying to keep that and just move it into a bigger mm -hmm. space. So, well, I think it's a really, really cute idea that you're talking about. But um, just think, going back to what they're offering, their main thing is like crepes, right? You wouldn't think that a crepe spot would be able to, uh, expand so much you know to be so popular that it needs a bigger space yeah uh, one that can host events and all that um but it just reminds me that i feel like crepes are so versatile are they offering like sweet savory really crazy different yes. items? Yeah. yeah they do sweet and savory crepes they usually have with their seasonal menu some kind of uh on theme like seasonal mm -hmm. crepe but mm -hmm. yeah it's very cool i think that's why it is so popular because they're made to order. They're very like, I mean, it's not like they tout themselves as like a French cafe, mm -hmm. but they're like French style crepes, like uh, with an egg in the middle and cheese and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not just like a Nutella glorified yeah. pancake. That yeah. I, I, the, I, the biggest experience I have with crepes really is at a place I think you also covered in the past called Crepe Escape. Yes, yeah, and those and are so good. Exactly. I'm like, okay, after experiencing that, seeing how huge and loaded those would be, super sweet, by the way, a lot of them. Um, I'm like, yeah, I could see that being expanded on and, and being this very popular thing. And yeah. Yeah. And also like Chris and Joe, when they started, they just thought it would be a cool thing like they never owned a mm -hmm. restaurant concept like that but and they were able to make it so successful so now kind of reaching this six-year milestone and getting this new space like they're really excited to be able to be even more like intentional and do more with it because they've already built such a huge following in just their little mm -hmm. neighborhood spot so yeah and it's always nice to have another space to host a party so <laughs> that's what i, I good I've, income source too i've them. been already telling my friends like with 
bridal showers or baby showers coming up, I'm like, you should do it there because it's so cute. You don't need to buy any decorations. Like everything there is already decorated. <laughs> yeah. And in other news, maybe less exciting, Popo Beer Company in mm-hmm. Willoughby, they announced this week that they are going to be permanently closed this Sunday, September 29th will be their last day. They are ceasing brewing operations, the restaurant, the tap room, the whole space in Willoughby. Mm. Um, They have a location in Crocker Park that they're going to continue to operate as normal. They're going to sell the pulpo beer they have till it runs out and then probably replace their kegs with uh, different local craft beer. But very sad to see them go uh, Latino-owned brewery out of Willoughby. So So they're completely shutting it down and it'll be nothing um, after, what was that date? again 29th this sunday yes yeah and they had just opened on the second floor this summer i think um a cocktail sort of rooftop bar the kraken room or something yes Yes. and that will be also permanently closed which is a huge bummer and i know um speaking to one of the partners there he was saying there's a few different reasons but the main reason is the rising cost of brewing um Mm -hmm. i think mark bona who was not here today but we've uh, talked to him about it before it's really not craft beer isn't the most lucrative business like it's Mm -hmm. not a business to go in and make a ton of money quick kind of thing so Mm -hmm. i think just a lot of rising costs and um, the same ownership group they own like baroco and ola and amazonian Mm -hmm. stuff like that so probably just having to cut where they need you know yeah it kind of makes sense it is a little bit sad but uh they still have the crocker park location which was first i'm guessing i'm assuming no no the willoughby no because they did all the brewing out of the willoughby like their whole facility is there they call the cracker one their tap room but i think it's because the menu there is different too like it has its own restaurant menu and maybe just the location because it's very walkable that 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 location is doing really well so so, okay maybe and maybe i'm just trying to understand something so you said most of their or all of their brewing came out of the willoughby location all of it so where do they get their beer now Uh, yeah so they're gonna sell what they have Uh left of pulpo and then once they're out they're gonna replace the kegs with other okay they're just gonna keep the the restaurant as a restaurant space and still i think call it pulpo i don't think they're changing the name as far as i know right now but, so uh, yeah in a way it's just the brewery side of it, it's just completely gone yeah yeah and just, and that's why i think it sounds like the biggest factor was like rising yeah. economic cost of brewing because it was a huge facility there were two floors they had the roof and i mean beer equipment it's not cheap like mm-hmm. it's so and we're in ohio which is a state controlled state which just also means there's a lot of hoops and stuff to jump (laughs) through sometimes especially anything with booze so i think it's just yeah just something that didn't work out but it's a bummer because i really liked a lot of their beers they had really distinct flavors very much uh keeping to the latin roots of the entire business Mm -hmm. pretty much and i i just i really liked their beer so i was really bummed about that but Still can go to the Cracker one. Oh, and if you have gift cards, you can still use them at the Cracker one for food and other stuff. So, yeah, that that is sad. Um, I kind of wonder if they're going to sort of, I, I don't know, take any of this and apply it to their other businesses. I know you said it, the ownership ownership group has several other sort of restaurants that I don't know if there's any way to like put any of those assets even maybe employees i don't know Well, that i do know i know that um they said for this last week which by the time this comes out it'll be this last weekend they really want everyone to go out and support the employees Mm because they really they've had a great time there and the employees are all they all get offered to work at one of the other entities that's awesome that's always good to hear exactly too many too much of the time we don't really think about the you know how that affects the people who actually rely on that for an income so that's nice to hear and that's what's almost nice too about these kind of hyper local restaurant Mm -hmm. groups we talk about i mean even what she was talking about with the vessel and uh the i forget the name of the the pulpo baroco ola group is um it can like kind of it's not like you close your one restaurant mm-hmm. and it's just over and done, you know? It's like building that community. Yeah. So, Josh, you yeah. recently went to Halloween weekends. 
a place I personally <laughs> consider to be my worst nightmare as a scary <laughs> cat. But how yeah. was it? What well, what's the vibe this year? Yeah, the vibe is it's always vibing. It's always very spooky, very fun, um, very festive, right? So again, Halloween weekends is back. Uh, it's running this year through uh, every Thursday through Sunday until about November second, I believe is the last day. And for whatever reason, they're not open on actual Halloween, October thirty first, which is a little weird. But I don't, I don't what know. What day of the week is Halloween? This it's year? a Thursday, so yeah. Anywho, um, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not the biggest person to like love to be scared. You know what I'm saying? I don't normally just visit, ha- you know, haunted houses every season. But what I do love about Halloween weekends is it's not just about the scares and the haunted houses. It's also about the food. It's a very big aspect of it. Each year they have a, do- a new menu with different things that they've crafted just for that specific season. And this year, I got to say, very, very cool stuff. Um, but on the si- savory side of things versus the sweet side of things, I'm really got to give it to the sweet item. So I'm going to go ahead and give yeah. you a rundown of Tell- some of the things they've got going Tell on me. and where, you know, my highlights were for in my recommendations if you go this season. So um, on their list of things that we were – so when I went, it was part of a media event that they allowed us to try different things. So the things that I tried and, and they had featured there were – um, they had a glazed gargoyle chicken wings, which were very much like traditionally grilled chicken wings that are that feels like a uh, like a barbecue. It, it was fairly like standard it, to me, but um, it's like sort of got this candy glaze to it that makes it look very bloody and gives that aesthetic. So that's the sort of Halloween. What is the flavor? Um, I'm pretty sure it's barbecue, but it just says glazed gargoyle chicken. <laughs> Interesting. So outside of that, um, <laughs> they have this thing called an apple cider uh, donut bunt cake, I believe is how you pronounce that. That sounds good. It was <laughs> so good. It was the highlight for me. So it's in this little, little bunt cake, um, and it is what you exactly how it sounds, but it just it has this really crispy sort of apple cinnamon spice like crust to it Ooh. that just it just when you bite into it, you get you get that first layer and then you get the softness and the moistness of like the donut cake it just it's so good that is definitely one of my favorite items on the list there very much so (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and then another one on that sweet side of things too is their deep fried cheesecake which is if you just look at this ridiculous when i we've gone too far (laughs) it is you're right it probably is too far but it's so good when you just look at it it looks like if, if you didn't know any better, it just looks like a big burrito. Like, it really is, like, the size of my, like, fist, like, my hand, but, like, very thick and all that. So it's just, like, this this burrito-shaped thing of fried cheesecake, and it comes with a garnish or, like, a, a cup of, like, blueberry compote with, like, whipped cream in it that you dip it in. It's a very messy situation, but it's so, 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 so worth it because when those flavors come together, How it's like... How do you like fry a cheesecake? I... I'm not a chef. I don't know how they did it, but it is so delicious, and it looks like a burrito. Well, okay, now, I agree <laughs> that it's probably great. What does that have to do with Halloween? Um, you don't <laughs> have to ask all the questions. That's like okay? a fair food. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you think about it, it's very festive, fairy area time of year. All right, amusement park. I got to should give be a, a pumpkin spice cheesecake. Got to give them a pass on that. But back to the uh, savory side of things, they have these things called buffalo toes, which are basically. I like, don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically it's basically uh, fried cauliflower with, with um like in buffalo sauce. So yeah, it's it's it wasn't my favorite. But why do they call it a toe? Because it kind of, it just looks a little creepy the way it's presented. Like a, like, uh, like like a it could foot? Be, not a foot, but like little, maybe like little toes, you know? Like, I don't know. Okay. That's, it's no, this is be- like when people like, they put the skeleton and then they put the lunch meat on it so it looks like guts. Yes. No, yes. no. I I, that. I draw I the that. line there. <laughs> no, but another notable menu item they have is their prosciutto pizza, which is just exactly how it sounds. There's nothing really too spooky or anything about that Italian pizza. <laughs> um, and, but another thing, this is this this item made me feel like there was some competition, but between the sweet and savory side of things because they have these things they call hellfire fries. They're basically like 
standard fries, but maybe a little bit thicker, almost to the, the, the level of like a steak cut fry or whatever, but it's not super thick. What's really nice about them, um, I'm sure you've had the nacho fries from Taco Bell. It's very similar in a sense that you, those have like a crust or a flavoring on them that's like mm -hmm. caked on it. Like I think in that case it's like taco seasoning or something like that. Here, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's all, it has that sort of same kind of, you know, salty texture on it. But then also it, you know what it, it has, um, hot Cheeto does, you know, that, that's my, everybody knows that's my thing. It's also caked and coated in hot Cheeto dust. So it's like just all comes together for this really delicious thing. And I think it's also presented with like jalapenos on it too. So Ooh. yes, very, very good. Um, and there are a couple other things. Of course, they also have like um, cocktails that they're offering there. I didn't really try any of them. Where do you get these items oh, in the park? Oh, that's a good question. So there are restaurants just kind of sprinkled throughout that you, you can kind of find and go to. I know there's a big Ferris wheel and there's a restaurant right behind that big Ferris wheel that I think is pretty a pretty good location to go for drinks or the food. And throughout the park, especially in the haunted areas, if you stop at a restaurant or a, a food stand, odds are they'll have it, but mm -hmm. you kind of have to just like find one. Um, but yeah, just a couple of cool, Halloweeny, folly drinks that they have on their um, menu to something called um, an apple cider mimosa. Exactly what it sounds delish. like. Very delicious sounding. Something called a full moon margarita. Once again, probably what you think it is. A black drink, tequila, sweet and sour stuff. So it's black. Yes, all black. Um, and then a zero, something called a zero proof enchanted elixir. Now that to me sounds really good. Uh, it's described as a shimmering, color-changing mystery, a blend of <laughs> a blend of lemon, Sprite, and blue carousel. And so yeah. it's a blue Sprite mixed with lemonade. <laughs> and it probably shines with some kind of dust. It's I don't a, know. But it enchanted look. I didn't elixir. see it. It's an enchanted elixir. Did you go through any of the scary things? Yeah. So, I mean, I walk. So they have. Haunted houses that you can stand in line for and you can go through and it's normally like a two minute, you know, thing where, boo, you get scared. But I just walked through, I, I'm not really, like I said, I'm not really that big on scares. I don't want to be, you know, touched or like surprised too, too much. So I just walked through like their scary alleyways, which are kind of open areas where I they just those. have characters walking around roaming and popping up on people. And if you really, really, really don't like it, you can by uh, a don't scare like they have thing. that now yeah they have it yeah it's funny i always wonder like when i was a child growing up in greater cleveland everyone with an october birthday wants to have it on halloween weekends and you used to have to walk through the frontier foggy uh -huh. area you couldn't avoid it and i'm pretty sure this does not have to do with food but my stepdad still has a 20 minute voicemail because i walked through and pretended to be on the phone <laughs> and they still came up to me they were like you can't be on the phone That's funny. They then they learned my name <laughs> and now i'll never go back but maybe i will to eat if i could wear okay, yeah. if i can wear like two name tags that <laughs> say do not even look at me <laughs> They also, um, yeah, I don't, I personally don't get why if you are scared to the point where you need to purchase a, an item to say don't scare, I don't know why you're even anywhere near the park during Halloween, but hey. I know, you're saying you go into the haunted house and they say boo. It's like, if you've been to those haunted houses, it's like nightmare fuel. Yeah, that's like, true. <laughs> um, But yeah, you don't have to get scared. You can just go and enjoy the food. A lot of uh, the, during the lighter side or when there's daylight there's tons of kids activities and things to to enjoy like playing in hay and trick-or-treating and and face painting all that sort of, sort of fun stuff for the kids so tons of stuff to do at hollow weekends in cedar point and one of the biggest things that i think is overlooked is the food so check that out yeah for sure. no sounds like uh, i i might have to go but i might have to get a name tag <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to or watching Dine Drink Clean the Podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Dine Drink Clean, and make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at cleveland.com slash newsletters. 